scenes typical of the American family at home. First floor living room. Children at play, unaware of approaching disaster. This house was 6,000 feet from ground zero. Other homes that were closer were incinerated. Everybody has seen that very famous footage of the houses just imploding and then exploding out. What happens first is that it gets hit by the heat, and so it blistered almost all of the paint. When you look on the back side of the house, you can still see some remnants of the paint gutters off of the house. The chimney here was shifted about six inches. The blinds that were on the windows were all blown out. But otherwise, this house withstood the blast pressures and the heat from the nuclear test. The Apple II bomb was placed in a tower 1,500 feet above the ground, so the resulting fireball wouldn't destroy monitoring equipment. Technicians built small towns within the blast zone. Shops, gas stations, dozens of homes made of brick and wood. They called the small cities doom towns. Here, just before dawn, for the first time in our history, American homes will be exposed to atomic blast. Today, main street of every American city and town. We had all kinds of houses built, grocery stores, we had uh, the electrical systems. Single-story homes, two-story homes, wooden, brick, block, and so on, different distances from the ground zero to see what the effects would be from the blast and the heat. Inside the buildings, workers positioned entire families of mannequins who silently waited for the explosions to come. Let's see what would happen to a normal, average family We had mannequins with all different types of clothing on, wool, you know, cotton, rayon, nylon. The mannequins at a house that are roughly 5,000 feet away. I had them sitting at the kitchen table, and we had a lean-to in the basement. The mannequins became some of the most famous participants of the tests. And those mannequins that had radiation content, they never got them back, but the rest of them that didn't, they took them back. What they did with them, I don't know. <laughs> Minus one minute. The airplane is up over our shoulders. It is a bright silver spot in the sky. Turn it I'm going to look away and then I'll find it again. 30 there, I got seconds. Him. I got him. John sees it. 25 seconds. Look away and then look back and you'll see it easy. 20 seconds. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. There it goes. The rocket is gone. We felt a heat pulse, a very bright light, a fireball. It is red. The sky looks black about it. It is boiling above us there. It is rapidly losing its color. There is the ground wave. It is over, folks. It will happen. The mounds are vibrating. It is tremendous, directly above our heads. It worked! It worked! Boy, I'd hate to be here. Good, good. And there is a huge fireball. The mounds are still echoing through here. Wasn't that a perfect, perfect shot? My only regrets right now are, this Colonel Bruce, that everybody couldn't have been out here at Ground Zero with us. Okay, Bodie. We can still see it's a very odd cloud. Uh, it is white in the center, and there's a bright orange ring towards the outside of it. Then below it, there's like a hazy cloud. 
I don't know, Colonel Bruce. I've never quite seen a cloud like this from atomic detonation. Have you? No, I haven't, Bodie. There seems to be quite a uh, halo connected with it, and uh, there's quite a bit of mist up there. I'm not... Uh, this is new to me. M maybe from seeing it from ground zero, we're missing a mushroom. But there doesn't seem to be any evidence of a, a mushroom type of stem that we have uh, associated with other detonations. Folks, it was just a wonderful thrill to see that interceptor come in, that rocket go at the zero count. This thing went off with a white flash. It was just beautiful.